Hello, I'm Pastor Jim Cunningham, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit today about the Caring Hands Ministry. Wait, stop, hold on a second. Don't touch that channel. No, this is for you. Yes, this is for you. It's for the person I'm looking at right now. This is for you. Um, can you think about the blessing that it would be to you to be able to lay your head in a pillow at night and say to yourself, you brought a smile to the face of somebody who ordinarily doesn't get time to smile very much. I visit oftentimes in the hospitals and nursing homes. And so often the thing that people look forward to is the next meal or the next pills, but there's nothing much else that goes on there. And we, with the Caring Hands Ministry, we come along with people from First Baptist Church who can't come to church anymore, and we are their encouragement. We are a blessing to those people. And so today we have several people from the church who are currently involved with the Caring Hands Ministry, and we like you to hear their story and see how God has blessed them and used them to be a blessing to other people. We got involved with Caring Hands in the most unusual way. The couple that we visit all the time, we know them for our, our community group. When COVID hit, they sequestered at home and they got older and couldn't come out as much. The church contacted them asked if they wanted somebody else to show up. And so they asked for us specifically to be the ones that came because we'd already made a connection with them. We'd already spoken with them many times at our home when we had get togethers. And one time they arrived early and we had a great time just getting to know them better. So it was just a re-establishment of a relationship that had been started previously. I've always had an interest in older people and, uh, and it, this was just in a, a, a means of uh, working with them, getting to know them. I don't know that it was actually a true desire of mine. I just kind of fell into it. I thought, you know, God, why am I doing this? And he answered me by directing me to scripture that said, go visit the widows in their affliction. Mm -hmm. He didn't give me great in instruction on why. I didn't, he didn't explain. He just said, go. And from there I learned there's value in obedience. Mm. And it's been a worthwhile investment over the years of visiting these people. It just makes them feel like they are, they are still a person of worth. Every time we leave, he'll say, you really made uh, a, a happy spot in my day. And I always think that's, that's good, that he, uh, he really appreciates it. It's been a good relationship. You know, we have grown together. She values the visits tremendously. Her mother and I are her primary visitors. And so it means a lot to her to have somebody come. Because she is an older person than myself, I feel like I've gained wisdom from uh, talking to her. She's also from another country, so I really have learned a lot um, uh, through that. And just, it helps me know better how to pray for her. Through all of this, I think we've learned <laughs> the necessity of reaching out to others around us because this has allowed us to be more involved with the couple we get to see, extending their family and needs that way, as well as people we have in common during the weeks when we're not there to be able to talk and share with them. So it's made connections in a different way than we had thought we'd be making before. One of the things that she has taught me is that even though I walk with a walker, I have limited use of my hands, that I still have a service for God and a service to other people. I'm still to bring honor and glory to God. Because she knows it's difficult for me to go visit, she treasures those. Um, it's more than just a oh, polite, I'm glad you came. But she knows, she appreciates the effort, and, she, and it is an effort. We travel some, and we always like to t tell him where we've been on our trips because he's been around the world living in, in different parts of Europe and so forth. So he connects with that. So I think he enjoys uh, that and we enjoy communicating with him where he's been. I think the biggest surprise for us is to listen of their journey as people of faith, listening how they became saved older on in life, how God always led them to the right place at the right time, how they perhaps wanted to settle in another location and God closed that door and opened these doors. And because of our couple's willingness to be involved in different ministries, it's allowed them to have a different viewpoint. So it's made us learn more about what the possibilities of God are in our lives, as well as their own. Even though she's in her 90s, her brain is more functional than mine. <laughs> 
she has a lot of wisdom. My VSP, uh, I think he's, he uh, takes the record uh, with uh, being the age of 101 and a half. And so it's just amazing to me just to be with a man that has lived that long and um, can still talk. He still has his mind is good. And just to appreciate uh, an older gentleman like that, to see what he's done in life and how he approaches life. Uh, whenever I ask him, how are you doing? He'll say, uh, I'm, better, I, I'm better than what I deserve, he says. So uh, I really appreciate his positivity at his age. For the most part, elderly people are forgotten and just kind of disregarded. So um, I just want to be there to let them know that they are not forgotten and know how to better pray for them and just encourage them. I think our greatest need is just to be able to communicate with what's going on within the church. Um, they watch the Sunday messages. They watch the Wednesday night prompts that the church puts on. But they don't always know everything, so we try to bring that to them. And I think the biggest thing, too, is helping them to become more involved in our lives and hear our testimonies and for them to ask questions that extend their depth of relationship with people around them. I think it's been good to uh, learn to know these older folks, um, maybe what their needs are, and just to be a friend to them. A lot of them don't have uh, people visiting them very often. It happens that my man uh, lived with his daughter, so he had uh, companionship, but a lot of them don't. And so uh, they really appreciate when you come and spend an hour with them every month or so. I do truly care about her. And when I got called into the relationship, um, her husband was actually in the final stages of hospice. And so um, I, I, I helped her and her daughter both kind of get through it. I do have a medical background, but you don't need a medical background. But I was able to just kind of be there and let her know that I cared. And then she had a stroke. And I, again, was able to help her and her daughter and her family through that process. And she's recovered now. Praise the Lord. You've heard some good stories. Uh, there's currently about 40 different people and therefore 40 different VSPs that are involved, very special people. And we're always looking for more. And this Friday night, we have a very special night called the Caring Hands Night for Appreciation and Information. And I guess we could probably say A for the appreciation and I for the information. So it's an AI night. And we're gonna talk over the things that have to do with being a caring hand. It'll last for one hour. You'll have a good dessert. You'll be on your way home. So we'd love to have you come at the church and the CLC, and hopefully we'll see you on Friday night at 6.30. Thank you.